Hey, it's Tommy Hodgins, and today we're going to talk about pre-processing CSS. Now, to do this, I'm going to illustrate by giving some examples from what we can do with HTML so that what I show you kind of makes sense. So if you're familiar with working with HTML and DOM in the browser, you might have heard about the DOM parser interface. This provides the ability to parse XML or HTML source code from a string into a DOM document. So if you have JavaScript, you can take a string, parse the HTML inside of it, and be working with the DOM nodes without having to add the HTML to your actual HTML document. So this allows you to pass the DOM nodes around. It allows you to uh, perhaps output them in different ways. And one of the ways that you can work with it is using this XML serializer. One of the methods that it has is serialize to string, which does the opposite. It constructs a string that represents a DOM tree. So with JavaScript, we have the ability to take HTML as a string and turn it into DOM, and we have the ability to take DOM and turn it back into a string. But we can't do that for CSS. So if we need to parse CSS, a lot of people will reach for a tool like PostCSS. Here we've got a JavaScript library that will read not just CSS, but uh, quite a few different syntaxes of style sheets. Um, it can run plugins, and it does all of this in the command line interface. But what we want to do is we want to parse something in the browser. PostCSS doesn't really run in the browser. It can, but, uh, you know, we want something that's closer to native, something that's closer to how the browser is actually parsing the CSS. So I've written this little function, and we're going to explore it in a second here, called parse CSS style sheet. And it's actually pretty simple, um, qu quite a bit smaller than something like PostCSS in terms of its source code. It's 10 lines of code here. And all it does is it takes a string and returns the parsed style sheet object. So just like HTML elements have different DOM node types and things, when you parse a CSS style sheet, you get a CSS style sheet object. And this object contains a property with CSS rules, so any rules contained inside the style sheet will be there. And that's about it. The other thing is we can parse individual rules from a string, and of course those return you know, CSS style rule or whatever type of rule it happens to be. Different rule types have different properties. So this one just has a selector and a style. But if you have media queries, there's also the media text. And if you're using at supports, there's the condition text and everything else. Now, the last piece of this, just like the XML serializer, is we have this stringify CSS style sheet function. And there's also an equivalent stringify CSS rule function that this one actually uses to output a style sheet. So if we were to pass in a CSS style sheet object, or if we were to pass in uh, a style rule, we can get the stringified representation of it using stringify CSS style sheet. So I'm going to show how you can use these two together to implement some very basic preprocessor functionality with just a few lines of code. So the thing that I'm going to pick here, this is a dead simple post CSS plugin that supports a shortcut for defining size. So if we look here in the readme, you can see that there is a size property, and this one has two numbers defined. This one just has one, and this is the input. And then the output from this post CSS preprocessor size plugin is going to be, for the first one, two different properties with different values gleaned from here. And for the second example here, where there's just one value being put in, we have two properties that are the same. So this is a pretty simple shorthand, but the problem with this is that this is not valid CSS. At any point in the future, they could introduce a size property, and so this isn't something that you can safely put into your style sheet today, or if you are working with this, you have to understand that this is uh, dangerous CSS or not safe for the future. But there is a way in CSS that we are allowed to create custom properties uh, called CSS custom properties. So I would like to use regular valid CSS to do the same thing that this post CSS size plugin is doing and see how hard it will be to get it working. Let's have a peek at their code just so we know what we're up against. So here it looks like it's bringing in post CSS. It's walking through the declarations looking for size. 
depending on whether it finds one or two, it's going to use these values. And so now it's going to add a width and add a height and remove the size declaration. So that seems pretty simple. Let's see what we can do about it. So over here is my HTML demo page. It just starts with a regular doc type, simple style sheet. I have two text areas. So one of these is gonna be where we enter the CSS to be processed. The other one is going to be the pre-processed result being output back to the page so we can do something with it, look at it, copy and paste it. That's all about all the HTML that we need. Now looking at my code here, I'm bringing in that parse CSS style sheet function I told you about. And I'm also bringing in the stringify CSS stylesheet plugin. I'm saving a reference here to the input and output. And on key up, blur, paste, and window load, I'm going to run this function. And all that this function does here is it sets the output text area's value to the stringified stylesheet that has been run through a preprocessor function. And the style sheet that we're giving to the preprocessor function is the input value. And then I can define a list of plugins here that we're going to run on that style sheet. So I have defined one called size expander, which we'll see below. And that's the only plugin that this particular demo is going to use. So the rest of my code here is just this preprocess function and our one uh, preprocessor plugin that's equivalent to the post CSS size. So here in the preprocess function, we're going to pass in a CSS style sheet object as well as a list of plugins. Inside, there's just two functions defined to process a style sheet, which we feed a style sheet in, and that's what we do is we process it. We take an array from the style sheet CSS rules, and for each rule, we're going to run it through this process rule function. Now, because a rule can contain CSS rules itself, like think like a, a media query is a CSS rule that has CSS rules inside of it. If we find a rule that has rules nested inside, we just send it back up through here and have it process all of its rules. Otherwise, for each plugin that we have, we're going to run the rule that we found through each plugin. So we process the style sheet that was fed in, and then after this transformation step here has happened for every single rule, we just return the style sheet. This is the style sheet that gets returned from this function and stringified and set as the value. So here is our equivalent to post CSS size. We have written a simple JavaScript function. It's similar in size, but a little bit simpler than the original. And here's what we need to do we give a CSS style rule in, and if there is a property named size, this code is going to run. What we do is we take the value, get property value, and we're going to split it by a space. We're going to remove the size property from our input. We're going to set the width to whatever the first value is. And if there is a second value, we'll set the height to the second value. Otherwise, it'll be the same as the first. So now I'm going to type this, and we'll see if we can get a result something kind of like this. I'll copy this. I'm going to type something first, and then we'll paste that in. So if I have a rule here, and I say size 10px, and as you can see, we've got both a width and a height declaration coming out in our output. The size declaration has been removed. And because there's only one value, these are both getting the same value. But if we were to add a second one, you'll notice that the width gets the, the first value and the height gets the second value. Now I'm going to go ahead and try, we're going to take this invalid style and make it valid. So now we have converted what was unsafe, invalid CSS into valid CSS, and we're still pre-processing it the same way. And we can do it with some very simple, meaningful code that's easy to write, 
We aren't using regexes or replacing things. Um, we're just working with these values in JavaScript. And just as easy as it was to define this size expander plugin, we could define even more functions down below. And then we could feed them in here and run as many different plugins as we wanted. So we're able to operate on properties, we're able to operate on selectors, we're able to take input and we could add entirely new rules. We could read one rule and have it output an entire style sheet for us. So we've got an awful lot of flexibility here when we're working in JavaScript with parsed CSS. And it's still easy for us to, we could add this directly to a style tag and get this right into the document. But for this purpose, it's just as simple for us to output it as a string as well. Uh, so we could save that as a file or we can use that in some other way or continue to process it. Now, just because this is happening in a browser doesn't mean that the only way to do this is client side. Uh, keep in mind that Chrome Puppeteer is a web browser that will run on the command line. And so we can run this function and its plugins inside of a web browser running on the command line. And so you can create your own CSS preprocessor uh, just about this simply, even if you're going to do it as a one-time build step server side before you serve the CSS. You could write this and process it using Node and end up with this in your file. And you can do that all yourself in just a few minutes. So I hope that this has been enlightening, and I hope that you'll go check out the parse CSS rule, parse CSS style sheet, stringify CSS style sheet, and stringify CSS rule functions. I think that these would serve as the basic building blocks that you could build preprocessors or dynamic style generators on top of, and it's something that's going to be lightweight, uh, very fast, running natively, leveraging the browser's own ability to parse CSS, so you're not trying to parse the language character by character, you're just letting the browser handle what it does best, and you're doing what you do best. So until next time, you may want to process a smash on the like button, and uh, subscribe for more videos. I'm going to be doing an awful lot of experiments with CSS this year, and having tools and building blocks like this is going to make it so much easier. Catch you next time.